Happy midnight, everyone, and welcome to Professor Moonshine's Redstone 101, Episode 10. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look both at droppers as well as dispensers. Similar to the piston episode, I figured that these two components were similar enough that we could just lump them in to one video, so hopefully that's okay with you guys. Without further ado, let's jump into it. We'll start with the dropper, since I think it's a little more simple to understand than a dispenser. This right here is a dropper. Droppers are containers that have an inventory of nine items. So we could put as many as nine different items in here. Now when a dropper receives power, it spits out one of the items at random. So it's going to choose one of these nine items randomly and just spit it out. Now importantly, droppers just spit the item out. This is something that's different with dispensers, as we'll see later. But for example, if I were to have a splash potion in here, the dropper is simply going to spit it out. Again, we'll see that dispensers later on work differently. Now let's say we were to flick this lever which powers the dropper to spit out an item. Before this dropper can spit out another item, it has to become unpowered. So we can see if we were to flick this lever right here on and off, nothing's happening with the dropper. The dropper has to become unpowered before it can become repowered to spit out another item. A good analogy for this is kind of like one of those air pumps for sports balls or bicycle tires. One of these things right here. If you were pumping up a football, you couldn't just push down on the handle once and hold, you would have to let up on the handle before pushing down again in order to inflate the ball. That's kind of like what's going on with the dropper here. Right now it's just being powered, so we have to kind of let up on it before powering it again to spit out another item. Hopefully that makes sense. Now another very important property of droppers is that when the block right in front of their face is a container block, such as a chest, the dropper is just going to deposit its item into the chest instead of spitting it out. So we can see that in action right now. The chest is empty, and these are the items in the dropper. If we flick the lever, the dropper has deposited the item directly into the container block. And again, the item that it deposits is chosen totally randomly out of the dropper's inventory. Now this is a super cool feature because as I mentioned earlier, droppers themselves are containers. So if I were to put a second dropper here and then another one, this dropper, when it becomes powered, is going to deposit its item into this dropper. Then we can go ahead and power this one and it's going to deposit that item into this dropper. So because droppers are themselves containers, you can use a dropper chain to move items along. Let's take a look at one of the ways that a dropper chain can be very useful in redstone. So if you guys remember from our episode on observers, observers can also form a chain where they're all looking at each other and so they can pass a signal upward. We can kind of illustrate this by if we have a redstone lamp at the top, we can cause a change down here and the observers pass that signal upwards. We can take this one step further by adding observers that are looking at the vertical chain. So if we were to go ahead and place redstone lamps here, we can see that these observers pass the signal along to the side as it goes upwards. Now if all we do is replace these redstone lamps with droppers that are facing into each other, now each of these droppers is going to get powered in sequence. So for example, if we were to put white wool down here and then send a signal through, it's going to travel up and power each of these droppers in sequence. The dropper is going to then pass the item vertically upward, so we can see that happening. It makes a lot of noise, but isn't that super cool? Even better, if we put a chest up here and run the same experiment, so we can put white wool in the bottom chest and then send a signal through, the droppers are going to take that white wool all the way up and deposit it directly into the chest. This right here is called an item elevator, and it's super useful in redstone for transporting items upward, and it's made possible by the dropper. So that's it for the dropper, let's go ahead and review what we learned. Droppers are container blocks, and they have an inventory of 9 items, so they can hold 9 unique items. When a dropper receives power, it just spits out one of those 9 items at random. Now in order for a dropper to spit out one item and then spit out a second one afterwards, there has to be a point in time when the dropper loses power. Similar to how when you're using an air pump on a sports ball, you have to go up before you can push down again. Lastly, if a dropper is facing into a container block, it will simply deposit the item directly into the container block, again choosing that item at random from its inventory. Because droppers are themselves containers, droppers can pass along items between each other. This property allows for the creation of something like a dropper item elevator that can transport items vertically by powering droppers in sequence. That's all for droppers, let's go ahead and move on now to dispensers. Now before we get started on the properties of dispensers, I do want to briefly touch on how to distinguish these two components visually. So this right here is a dropper. They have the more derpy looking smile, so you can kind of imagine that they're clumsy and they drop things all the time. 
The dispenser, on the other hand, has this circular looking mouth that's like a little more serious. He's like, hmm, I, I dispense things. I'm, I'm very serious about my job. So yeah, droppers look derpy. They drop things. They're clumsy. Dispensers look serious. Anyway, let's get on with the dispensers. So dispensers are very similar to droppers. They are also containers, and they also have an inventory of nine items. Just like droppers, when a dispenser receives power, it picks one of its nine items at random and dispenses it. You might then ask, well then, what's the difference between a dispenser and a dropper? The difference is that for some items, dispensers are capable of using that item. So for example, if I were to put splash potions in here and press the button, you can see that the dispenser actually shoots the splash potion rather than just dropping it. So for example, on the right, we have a dropper, and if we just power it, it's going to drop the splash potion as an item, whereas if we power the dispenser, the dispenser is going to shoot it out and use it. Dispensers can use all kinds of items. For example, if we put a water bucket in here and power the dispenser, it actually just deposits the water, and now it has an empty bucket in it. If we were to power it again, the empty bucket picks up the water. Another example is an arrow, so if a dispenser has arrows in it, it will fire the arrow. Dispensers can even use shears on a sheep. So if we put shears in here and press the button, the dispenser shears the sheep, which is super duper cool. All that to say, for some items, dispensers can use them rather than simply spitting them out like the dropper does. Now importantly, dispensers still choose randomly from their inventory, and they can't use every item. So in this example here, dispensers don't really do anything special with building blocks like orange wool, but it does use the arrow. Nevertheless, if we press the button and the dispenser randomly chooses the orange wool, it's just going to spit it out. Also, droppers and dispensers share the same powering rules, so we can see if we fill this up and dispense something using the dispenser, then the dispenser cannot continue dispensing things until it has time to lose power and regain power. The last thing I'll mention about dispensers is that unlike droppers, they do not deposit items directly into containers. So we can see if we put an orange wool in here and press the button, it's just going to spit out the orange wool. If this were a dropper, the dropper would have put the item into the chest, but dispensers do not share that property. And that's pretty much it for dispensers. Dispensers, like droppers, are container blocks with an inventory of 9, so they can hold 9 unique items. When a dispenser becomes powered, it spits out those items unless that item is something that the dispenser can quote-unquote use. These include things like water buckets, arrows, potions, it can use TNT, all kinds of things like that. So if a dispenser is powered and it chooses one of those items from its inventory, it's going to use that item rather than simply spit it out. Lastly, unlike droppers, dispensers cannot deposit items into other containers. So you can't make something like a dispenser chain that would move items along like you could with droppers. Alright guys, so that is everything I have to teach you about droppers and dispensers. Let's move on to a quiz. Alright, so here in front of us we have problem number one. This right here is a dropper, and it has these items in it. My question for you guys is, when I press this button, which of these items is going to get spat out by the dropper? Go ahead and think about it, and feel free to pause the video if you need more time. Got your answer? Alright, let's give it a shot. So this time it dispensed red wool. However, the correct answer was that the dropper would select one of those items at random. So actually, we have no idea of knowing which of the items it's going to spit out. You can see if I were to run the same experiment again... Okay, that time it actually did do red again. <laughs> let's try that one more time. Okay, yeah, see this time we got yellow. Because remember, both dispensers and droppers select randomly which of the items they're going to attempt to use or drop. Alright, let's move on to problem number two. Here we have problem number two. I have a dropper that has some items in it that I want it to dispense, but when I press the button, it's not dispensing them. There's some behind the scenes redstone over here. I want you guys to think about one reason why this dropper might not be dropping items like I want it to. So yeah, take your time to think about it. Feel free to pause the video if you need. Got your answer? Alright, let's see what's actually going on. So the behind the scenes rent that I mentioned is just a torch that's powering the dispenser. So this dispenser is constantly being powered. Now as we know, a dispenser needs to have a moment in time when it's unpowered and becomes repowered in order to spit out an item. Similar to, if you guys remember the example of the bike pump, you can't just hold the pump down and expect the ball to fill with air. You have to let the pump up before pushing it down again, and the same is true of dispensers and droppers. So you can see, if we were to remove the power source, now the dropper is dispensing the items like we wanted. Now we'll move on to problem number three. 
Here is problem number three. This right here is a dispenser, which you can tell by having the circular mouth on the top. Now I am going to fill this with firework rockets, and I want you guys to guess what's going to happen when I press the button. Again, take your time to think about it and pause the video if you need more time. Got your answer? All right, let's press the button. Nice! So you can see that the dispenser used the firework. So fireworks are one of the items that dispensers can use rather than simply spitting out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude episode 10 on droppers and dispensers. If you guys have any questions related to droppers or dispensers, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will get to as many as I can. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like and subscribe, but no worries if not. I'll catch you all in the next episode, and in the meantime, shine on little stars. Shine on.